WBMA, the very latest on the breaking news that we are all following, the horrific mass shooting in Maine at a bowling alley packed with people during a children's league and also at a restaurant. The suspect is still at large, so our team is on the scene in Maine this morning. And then we'll talk about the new Speaker of the House and what comes next with a government shutdown looming. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. And ahead in our next hour of GMSA, Victor Wembiyama's debut didn't go as first Spurs fans had hoped, but there were still plenty of highlights from last night's matchup with the Mavs. Plus, Katrina Weber shows us misuse and abuse of the 911 system that's been causing problems that may affect all of us. And Justin has got us covered on traffic. It's been a quiet mo morning so far. Right now on GMSA, a massive manhunt is underway across the state of Maine after at least 20 people were killed in a shooting at a bowling alley. What police are saying about the suspect who got away. Back here at home, San Antonio police looking for two teens who crashed a stolen car yesterday and got away. What we've learned about the case since then. And let's look out there with live cam this Thursday morning. We are starting humid. No rain in this shot, but we do have rain in our viewing area. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is 6 a.m. on your Thursday, October 26th. We hope you're having a good week so far. We hope you got the rain that you needed, but uh, not everyone's getting rain. That's right true. Mm -hmm. Did you get rain? A, a little bit a little here bit. or there. Uh, there are very brief downpours here or there yesterday, and I'm assuming that's the case again this morning. Except in the hill country where it has been coming down in mm -hmm. buckets and still is coming down. So flooding is definitely an issue in parts of the hill country, specifically in and around Fredericksburg, Gillespie County, way up there to the north. Now, as far as, as you can see, there's no rain falling in this picture, but it does appear that 10 is damp out there. This is the medical center on the left-hand side of your screen. And if you want to take a look at radar right now, first of all, up here to the north, you can see those heavy, heavy downpours moving from Gillespie County in toward northern Blanco County. There is a new flood warning for eastern uh, Gillespie County up until 830 this morning. And then also you just got to watch out for the usual flooding in a lot of the, the low lying areas, low water crossings, things like that, because these cells are definitely packing a punch as far as rainfall rates. A lot of the uh, the, the cells are dumping rain at the rate of about uh, anywhere from four or six inches per hour. Hour. Everything is moving individually pretty much straight up to the north, but then all of this is sort of drifting to the east. And so even though we're not seeing a lot right there in and around San Antonio, some of these will continue to, to drift across the area and then a few more of those cells developing down there to the to the south. So again, that's what we're going to have to watch out for. Those hefty downpours that, you know, really make the, the wipers go quickly, kind of a little bit blinding at times, and it's going to cause some ponding on the roads as well. So here is what the computer models are showing throughout the rest of the morning and the majority of the rain, basically San Antonio further up to the north. Individual cells, like I said, move to the north. This slowly works its way to the east. So by later on this morning, we're going to be seeing a lot of this rain. If you're planning on uh, heading up I-35, you're going to run into a lot of that. And then that will continue to work its way on out of here. But the first portion up until basically noon is when we're going to see some of the heavier rain in parts of the hill country. And then it's just going to be sort of the, uh, the scattered variety later on this afternoon, but we can still have some hefty downpours around here as well. Temperatures, we're in the mid 70s right now. They're not going anywhere throughout the morning. And once again, we're not going to gain basically that much at all, only getting up into the mid 80s later on this afternoon with still some of these showers and a couple of, uh, well, a couple of heftier downpours around there. Mold is on the moderate side. I suspect that's really going to be going up with some of this rain when the updated count comes out. Ragweed is low. So we're going to talk about the next couple of days, which not much changes, but of course the big, big changes coming in here later on Sunday with that cold front. Boy, it is going to be, it's going to be bone chilling. That's that may be putting it mildly. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Justin Horn is behind the wheel this morning. Good morning, sir. What's up? Good morning. And Mike, playing off of what you were saying, uh, since there's not a lot going on here around San Antonio, we want to remind everyone that's in the Hill Country. If you're out traveling this morning, we still have a while before the sun comes up. Low lying areas dangerous to drive through with some of the rainfall totals we've seen there in the hill country. You know the usual spots, not everywhere is flooded, but those low-lying areas can be dangerous. You don't want to travel through those if you don't have to. Now, that is not the issue. Let me reiterate that here in San Antonio. We have not gotten much heavy rain here at all, uh, but we could see some downpours coming in a little bit later this morning, so that will affect 
could affect the morning commute. So far, smooth sailing. We've got dry roads in most spots. 410 at Jackson Keller looks good there. 410 in Ingram, not a problem. So we look at the uh, traffic authority map here. It does look like we have a little slowdown. Uh, there is some construction there as you're coming in from Seguin. Otherwise, uh, we've got uh, green all across the city of San Antonio, which is a good thing. Still, we have not had many uh, incidents at all. Uh, a couple stalls here and there, but that's it. So if we do get anything coming in, as we've been saying, we'll let you know. And it could pick up a little bit more later this morning. Guys. To our top story this morning, police across the state of Maine are still searching for a man they say killed at least 20 people in the city of Lewiston. 40-year-old Robert Card is considered armed and dangerous. The tragedy unfolded in at least two locations, including a bowling alley, which was hosting a youth night for a kids bowling league. The second shooting happened at a local restaurant about four miles from the bowling alley there in Lewiston, Maine. We'll have more on this still developing story coming up in our 630 half hour. Here at home, San Antonio firefighters say a garage fire severely damaged a home on the city's far northwest side. Smoke and flames were seen just after 1 a.m. on Blue Water Cove. That is near Culebra Road and Shoreline Drive. Firefighters were able to put it out, but said the garage suffered serious damage. There were no injuries, and investigators are still trying to figure out what sparked that fire. One teen. One teen is in San Antonio police custody and two more on the run after a stolen car they were in crashed on the city's north side. Happened just after five last night on Patricia, not far from Blanco and Wurzbach Parkway. Police say the driver of the stolen Audi lost control and rolled the vehicle in front of an apartment. The three minors jumped out of the car and started running. Officers eventually caught up with one of them. No one was hurt in the crash. In your morning headlines, Israeli troops launched a brief ground raid into northern Gaza overnight. Israel says troops hit several militant targets in order to, quote, prepare the battlefield before a wildly expected ground invasion. Iranian-backed militants have been launching attacks in recent days on U.S. troops in that region. The focus remains on the hostages being held in Gaza. More than 220 hostages, including Americans, were taken by Hamas militants during the October 7th attack in Israel. And Qatar's prime minister says negotiations to release hostages are progressing. Meanwhile, after more than three weeks, there's a new Speaker of the House. Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana is known for his conservative views, garnering support from former President Trump. The first vote under Speaker Johnson yesterday, a resolution in support of Israel. The House must also take up funding for Ukraine and look to avoid a looming government shutdown as we head into next month. And before we go to break, a bizarre story from New York City. It was a scene straight out of Hollywood when a man trapped inside a security vault was there for hours. Here's ABC's Rhiannon Alley. It was like a scene out of Ocean's Eleven. Only not as glamorous, and it wasn't a robbery. Authorities say just before 9 o'clock Tuesday night, a man was going to his safety deposit box inside this high-security vault in a jewelry store on Fifth Avenue in New York when an employee closed the vault door, not knowing someone was still inside. Once the door is closed after 7 o'clock, it locks automatically. That meant without help, the man would be trapped in the 20 by 40 foot vault until morning. Fire rescue crews tried to cut through the concrete walls more than two feet thick. Uh, it's about 30 inches or so of concrete. Uh, we started doing that. Uh, we got to the point where we got to the metal plating. The problem with the uh, plating is we'd have to use our torches on there, which would infect the uh, environment of that person inside the vault. Those torches potentially producing sparks, smoke and heat all in that small vault. Still, crews worked through the night 10 hours straight until deciding to allow the vault to do what it's designed to do automatically open in the morning. About 6.45, uh, 6.15 this morning, the vault opened on its own and the customer was released. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. 608, 76 degrees. And just ahead, our fall adventure series continues on GMSA. Some of our GMSA producers went to SeaWorld again to see what's new for this year's Hollis screen. Here's a sneak peek at what they found. Right now in our spooky season, guests can come out from now until the end of October to come celebrate Hollow Scream and Spectacular with us. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's really oh. cold.
And we're going to check out what you can expect at Hollow Screen. That's coming up next. Back outside with live cam. Just now tuning in. Thanks for starting your day with GMSA. Yes, you do need an umbrella. And some of you are getting downpours right now. All that and the chatter about chattering teeth next week. Strong <laughs> cold front still on the way. We'll be back. The decorative skulls you see everywhere during Day of the Dead are called calaveras, and the most popular calaveras originated with a political cartoonist and printmaker, José Guadalupe Posada. Born in 1852, Posada lived through some of Mexico's most turbulent times, and his first political cartoons were published when he was just a teenager. They were so successful, they forced a governor out of office, but Posada's new enemies forced him to flee town. In 1888, he moved to Mexico City, and in the following years, he helped publish tens of thousands of illustrated flyers, or volantes. These single-page tabloids were like our late-night talk shows. They were filled with biting political humor, and at a time when few could read, Posada's Calaveras became popular throughout Mexico. So popular, many believe he raised the country's political consciousness. And when the Mexican Revolution was just beginning, Posada published what would become his most famous image, La Catrina. At the time, many of Mexico's ruling class were obsessed with acting and looking European. To mock them, Posada put a fancy French hat on the Aztec's female god of death. His statement, rich or poor, we all die. Death is the great equalizer. As far as Posada, he died poor and mostly forgotten in 1913. But in the following decades, his influence on the great artists of Mexico became undeniable. Today, many consider Posada the father of modern Mexican art. And La Catrina has become the icon of Day of the Dead. Time check just about 6.15 this month. Some of our GMSA crew has been taking on some fun fall adventures. So some of our producers went to SeaWorld to see what's new this year for Hollow Screen. Here's a peek of what they found. We're back out here at SeaWorld. This year they have a whole new haunt. We're about to go check it out. We don't know what exactly to expect, but we're hoping it's a good time. We'll see. Screen, the biggest, scariest, and screamiest event in Texas. We have seven territories, six haunted houses, five specialty themed bars, and two special shows. We are here. We're going through our first haunt is the swamp. I'm really scared. Scale of one to ten, how much do you think we'll scream? Um, I think at least like an 85, because this is, the atmosphere out here is really intense. That's, I'm doing great. We're doing great. We're doing great. There's a lot of dark places to where there's a lot of characters that pop out at you and reasons why guests just come back again and again. Okay, we just had an amazing night at SeaWorld. They've done it again. Hollow Scream, amazing. Very scary. I loved it. New haunts this year. You have to check it out. Highly recommend. Something for everyone. I want to come back already. I was scared, but it was worth it. Okay, if you had just hit snooze and are awake now, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> like, just, what's that screaming noise? Yeah, That's Hollow Scream. Uh huh. All right, let's check traffic at 616. Uh, nothing too scary on the roads this morning, guys. It's been really uh, pretty quiet. We look at Transguide here at 37 and 410. Still looking good. It's been pretty amazing this morning. We haven't had any issues uh, really at all, knock on wood. Uh, we do think that there will be a little bit of moisture that will be moving in uh, perhaps here soon. Mike will have more with the radar here in just a second. But uh, just a quick tour of 
Some of the roads right now, 1604 and Petrenko, does look a little wet there. Looks like there's a bit of a sheen on the road, so there is going to be some slick spots. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And as traffic picks up, uh, I will get uh, probably a little more uh, troublesome later this morning with the, uh, the roadways. Uh, looking at uh, the map here, all green. We haven't had any problems whatsoever. Uh, not any, even any yellow to show indicate slowdown. So uh, everything's looking good here. Like to see that. Uh, we'll go back to Trans Guide. And uh, there's 410 at WW White. Looks good there too. Uh, really a, a pretty quiet morning. Hopefully it stays that way. And here is Justin hey. Horn. Hello. It Hi there. Hi there. looks like <laughs> there's a couple of damp roads out there. Again, mm -hmm. nothing you know big showing up on radar, but as you hit the roads, even now or later on, you know, and watch out for the, the buses and everything. Now you just have a little extra time. Temperatures are in the mid 70s right now. It is very humid and those numbers aren't really going much of anywhere and we're going to gain, you know, the past few days we've gained maybe 10 degrees, give or take. And so we'll only uh, go up about seven later on this afternoon, 82, still a couple of notches above normal, a few more scattered showers and a few more storms out there. And this is what I was talking about. And take a look at live cam over there right by 410 and 10 looking out toward the medical center, looking out to the west and northwest. It does appear as though 10 may be just a little bit on the uh, the damp side. So here's what it looks like on radar right now. And again, all of these, the detectable rain has been sort of surrounding the area. And these individual cells are working their way to the north at roughly 15 to 20 miles per hour. So this cell, which is dumping some pretty good rain there right around Castroville, Rio Medina, that is sliding up to the north and working its way into the Helotus area. Leon Springs, you're going to be getting some of this. Up around Bernie, you've had some pretty good uh, showers and are still, still getting some as of right now. And those will continue to work their way, like I said, up to the north. And then over here off to the east, we've got this big batch of of rain right around New Berlin, Marion, uh, Geronimo, and just uh, heading up in toward New Braunfels. Let me put this into motion and show you where that is going. So that is going to be grazing New Braunfels green area. And then further on down to the south, we do have a few more of these cells that are developing down here. So more is uh, is definitely to come down here to the, uh, the southeast. Now, further on up to the north, this is where the heaviest rain has been falling, and there are estimates anywhere from four to six inches that has fallen in portions of the hill country more on top of that and that's why there is the new flash flood warning for eastern gillespie county up until 8 30 this whole line is going to slowly work its way to the east over the course of the morning all right let's jump ahead to what everybody is talking about and a lot of folks waiting for except for the uh gentleman off to my left over there justin's not a big fan of this kind of weather but it is going to definitely be cold raw windy big heavy coat gloves sort of weather oatmeal in the morning grilled cheese and soup in the afternoon however you want to describe it nine right now in cut bank 19 in casper wind chill is seven in casper we are going to be dealing with wind chills by monday morning as well and throughout much of the day on monday even now, once temperatures do drop down late Sunday night, so here's jumping ahead to Sunday. Up until then, we're going to have scattered variety of rain uh, throughout the afternoon hours, warm and humid. Then the front's going to be coming through, obviously sooner in the hill country during late afternoon in San Antonio. I'm looking for dinner time, early evening, seven o'clock. Winds will shift around. You're going to know it when this thing comes through with the wind shifting around. The temperature is going to be dropping a good 15, 20 degrees, and then we'll still have some rain in behind that. So cold blustery throughout much of the day on Monday with some of those showers around here. The hope is, though, that we are going to be seeing the rain move on out by trick or treat time on Tuesday, but it's still going to be really cold. So like I said, once we get past the heavier rain this morning, just the scattered variety, that'll be the case through Sunday. Front comes through here whole different story mid 40s on Monday basically mid 40s on Tuesday as well rain comes to an end late in the day but if you are going to go out trick-or-treating it is definitely going to be cold out there and staying cold through a good chunk of next week producer did you say toss to break Nope. I will right, we'll walk back over here then. <laughs> he he kept he kept talking in my ear there so sometimes my voice is a little hard to hear them but it is going to be definitely be cold on Monday so Get ready. I'm waiting for this. I know. It'll be a big change. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mike. 622, 76 degrees. And we'll be right back with your consumer headlines. Martial arts is my passion. I work out whenever I can. 
But with my moderate to severe eczema, it can be tough. My skin was so uncomfortable. The itching was so bad. Now I'm staying ahead of my eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. So adults can have long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a powerful thing. Ask your eczema specialist how Dupixent can help heal your skin from within. In your morning consumer headlines, audio and video calls on the site formerly known as Twitter. X has begun rolling out the feature, which allows users to chat with one another. Users can allow calls from verified users, people in your address book, or those you follow. Apple has released its latest software update with new features and a few fixes. iOS 17.1 comes with improvements to AirDrop, aimed at reducing the number of failed transfers. And there are more options on Apple Music, including new cover art and an expanded favorite section. And TikTok is planning its first in-person music festival. Cardi B, Anita, and, and Niall Horn. Am I saying all those right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Are far. scheduled yeah. to perform along with others. The event called TikTok in the Mix will be held December 10th in Mesa, Arizona. As you can tell, I'm going to be there. Uh, ticket sales <laughs> start through TikTok tomorrow. Well, you know, the budget's already out the, out the window after this past weekend, right? That's true. Formula yeah. One flew the shot the watch. That's true. <laughs> Time now, 626 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead at 630, Victor Wimbayama's de debut didn't go as Spurs fans had hoped, but there were plenty of highlights from last night's matchup against the Mavs. We've got those and what comes next for the Silver and Black. My first reaction was... Uh, a lot of anger that it was happening in the community because uh, Mainers were much better than this. Right now, GMSA, a massive manhunt underway across the state of Maine after at least 20 people were killed in a shooting at a bowling alley. What police are saying about the suspect who got away. Also this morning, San Antonio police are searching for the suspect in a shooting involving two kids on the city's west side. What have you been able to learn from that scene? Outside with live cam, showers and storms are back in the forecast and they are in our area as we speak. We'll take to, uh, talk to Mike in a moment and take a look at radar. But right now, we start with that still developing story we've been tracking all night here at KSAT 12. Police still searching for a person of interest and in what they're calling a mass shooting in the city of Lewiston, Maine. Officials there say at least 20 people have died. And as ABC's Ike Ajachi reports, dozens more were injured. This morning, a mass shooting tragedy unfolding in Lewiston, Maine, the state's second largest city. Police responding to shootings in at least two locations. There are multiple scenes in the city to include multiple hospitals. It's a lot of witnesses we're speaking with. Law enforcement identifying 40-year-old Robert Card as a person of interest. Authorities say he has a history of military service, is a firearms instructor, and was treated at a mental health facility over the summer after allegedly saying that he was hearing voices. If people see him, they should not approach Card or make contact with him in any way. The first call came in around 7 o'clock from a bowling alley hosting a youth night for a kids' bowling league. One witness saying she heard a loud bang before her father, a retired cop, corralled her and her family into a corner. I kind of like laid on top of her and my mom was kind of on top of me. Riley Dumont was bowling with her 11-year-old daughter when she heard several shots. During the chaos, she said she saw three or four bodies on the ground. The second shooting scene, a local restaurant about four miles from the bowling alley. Card on the run overnight, triggering a shelter-in-place order in Lewiston and neighboring Lisbon and Bodoin, Maine, where police say they found this white Subaru believed to be owned by the suspect. The car seen with the door open and lights on. Sources say hundreds of federal, state, and local law enforcement are assisting in this active investigation. Police as far south as New Hampshire setting up roadblocks, trying to confine Card in case he's on the run. Authorities earlier releasing these surveillance images, showing the gunman at one of the shooting locations. 
Looks like to me an AR-15 or some version of it. Looks like to me you know, that he's got some sort of extended magazine. I mean, typically those weapons, you can maybe shoot up to 25 or 30 rounds with a standard magazine. President Joe Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland have been briefed. The White House releasing a statement offering full federal support in the wake of this horrific attack. Lewiston is a relatively small city of 36,000 people, which experts say could be an advantage to investigators. I think it really increases the odds that somebody knows who the shooter is, because you're going to probably or do have survivors in each location, I presume. So with that, you can start tracking this guy. Authorities didn't reveal a motive overnight. Maine Governor Janet Mills releasing a statement urging all people in the area to follow the directions of state and local law enforcement. Also, Lisbon schools have been canceled for Thursday. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. And here at home, it's about 6.33 on your Thursday morning. Thanks for starting your morning with us. It is raining right now in some spots. Mike Osterhage is standing by with more on that. Yes, indeed. And uh, just grab your umbrella, grab your rain jacket, because if it's not raining where you are, it is more than likely going to. We're looking out here at the uh, at the medical center right now. This is 10 heading out of town and can't really tell if that's kind of a damp road or just the, the natural kind of reflection off the pavement there, but we do have plenty of rain that's going to be working its way into especially northwestern parts of uh, San Antonio very shortly. 76 right now. There is a ton of humidity out there with a dew point up to 74. I mean, that's the kind that definitely sort of pushes back when you step outside, kind of like a wet towel. And with all that moisture in there, that's what's squeezing, getting squeezed out and producing really, really heavy downpours, specifically starting off up there in the hill country where there have been four or six inches of rain. There is a new flash flood warning that's been issued for eastern Gillespie County, and that's in effect up until 830. And as you can see, individual cells are working their way primarily to the north, almost a little northeastward, but then everything is it, as a mass is sort of working its way to the east. So as these cells continue to, to slide up to the north, they will continue to slide a little bit further to the east. We've got a lot of rain off here right around Seguin, just to the east of New Braunfels and then further on down to the south. A few more of these cells are popping up. They may be small, but these things are dumping rain at the rate of about four to six inches per hour. Doesn't mean you'll get that much, but that's the kind that just is like literally a bucket getting dumped, so it may be a little blinding at times. Again, all of this is working its way up to the north, so we will continue to see some of these showers and even a few. Uh, well, I haven't seen a lot of lightning, but one or two thunderstorms thrown in as well. So again, the whole mass of rain continues to work its way slowly to the east, and that's been the problem, especially up in the hill country. These are moving slowly, so we are going to have to watch it right there along the I-35 corridor, heading up in uh, north of New Braunfels, San Marcos, Austin area, especially up around Austin. Austin later on this morning. The heaviest rain is going to be pretty much first half of the day. Then it's going to start to just be sort of the, um, the scattered variety later on this afternoon. And as far as this morning, again, showers, thunderstorms, heavy rain, mainly up to the north, but those little cells have some pretty good rain. Scattered rain this afternoon, warm and humid. Same thing tomorrow, same thing Saturday starting off on Sunday. Then that front's going to move through in the early evening hours and boy, it is going to be cold, wet, raw, blustery and wind chills to deal with. Wind chills in the 30s on Monday. Get ready for that. Big changes in the offing. Traffic Authority, Justin, it's been quiet up to this point. What's going on? It has, still is, Mike, still is. This is good news, uh, but playing off what you said, uh, for folks in the Hill Country, we're still pre-sunrise here. There's still going to be potentially some low lying spots on some of those country roads where uh, water could be a, a bit of a problem. So keep that in mind if you're outside of San Antonio. For San Antonio on the major highways, looks pretty good, although I'll show you 1604 in Petrenko does look wet. We're starting to see some rain approach from the west there. When you get that light sheen on the road, that's when it's at its worst, honestly, when you just get a little bit of light rain mixes with the oils and you get some slick spots. So I uh, encourage you to Take it slow. If you're there on the west side this morning, that's where some of the rain is falling right now. And we are starting to see some slowdowns now. Typical spots, right? Highway 90 as you're crossing over 1604 there. We often see slowdowns here in the morning. Now it's starting to show up along 151 as well. And then along 1604 where we have some of the construction. 
it's the normal spots at the moment. But as some of that rain, as Mike Shoji moves in, it could get a little more hairy later this morning. We'll certainly keep you posted. So far, no big incidents out there. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Justin. San Antonio police say a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old were shot overnight. They were found around midnight in the 300 block of Los Roslyn, just north of Highway 90 on the city's west side. Police say they found the 16-year-old with a gunshot wound in the hand and the 10-year-old shot in the arm. Both were taken to the hospital and are expected to be okay. The victims told police that the shooting happened on UTSA Boulevard. No suspect information is available at this time. And happening later today on the News at 6, Doc Talk. It's our new series featuring your medical questions on any subject. You can scan this QR code to let us know what questions you want answered by local doctors. Case at 12's Doc Talk airs Thursdays at 6.30. Well, looking ahead, there's another flu drive coming up. You can get a free vaccine courtesy of Bear County and University Health. That opportunity is on Saturday, November 4th from 8 a.m. to noon. And Haven for Hope is holding a fall coat drive on Friday and Saturday. You can make a donation between 9 and 5 p.m. Fleece hoodies, heavy coats, and lightweight jackets are all needed for all ages. You can also donate to their Amazon wish list as well. We have all that information on our website at ksat.com. Well, it was a late game, uh, so let's get you caught up this morning. The Victor Wimbanyama era is officially underway here in San Antonio. Wimby making his debut with the Spurs against the Mavs last night, made an immediate splash with the whole world watching. The number one pick in the draft blocked a shot in the opening minute. Wimby found his spot and scored his first NBA points with a three-pointer from near the top of the key at the 825 mark in the first quarter. He added another three later in the quarter. Slowed down by foul trouble, he broke loose for nine points in the fourth quarter and finished with 15. However, it still wasn't enough to beat Dallas. Spurs lose 126-119. Still the debut of the 19-year-old from France forced the Spurs to sell standing room only tickets for their season opener. So looking ahead, Spurs welcome the Houston Rockets to the Frostbank Center tomorrow night. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. Uh, they were ahead when I went to bed. The Spurs were. So I was like, ah, oh, we got this. And I was like, woke up this morning. It's like, ah, but I mean, we have a chance tomorrow. We have a long season yes, to go. Do. 639, 76 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up after the break. It is a literal lifeline for people who need help from police or firefighters. The 911 system there for emergencies. But what happens when people abuse it? I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. Welcome back. 643 traffic and weather are coming up at first. Three little numbers can be a source of a whole lot of help. 911, as you know, is set aside for emergencies, a way to get an ambulance, police or firefighters to respond right away. But as Katrina Weber shows us, misuse and abuse of that number has been causing problems that may affect all of us. Help has arrived in the San Antonio neighborhood, but it doesn't seem anyone needs it. Police and firefighters believed 911, what's your based emergency? on a 911 call that a man had been stabbed. Only there's no sign here of anything wrong. A short time later, they had the same result after a call about a fire. These were two of several we witnessed within a couple of hours this recent morning where there was no emergency. May say there were shots fired and uh, it we go out, find out maybe it was somebody had a tire blown out. Belinda Esquivel, a communications manager for SAPD, says she has overseen plenty of calls that send officers scrambling, sometimes unnecessarily. In many cases, it may be an innocent mistake. In others, it is intentional. There might be kids or some young adults who may think it's funny to call in, but it's taking resources from the actual calls. That not only includes manpower, but time and money. SAPD figures show in the first nine months of this year, officers responded to more than 156,000 911 calls that didn't pan out. While the department says it doesn't count up the costs, even if the city spent just $1 on each of these bogus calls, that is still a lot of wasted money. Do you have a mile marker as to where you may be like a T? As a 911 call taker, Denise Cardenas never knows what she might get. Up to 6,000 calls pour in each day. Sometimes they're life-threatening situations. Sometimes it's a loose dog in a park. Still, her job is to forward those asking for help to dispatchers who can send it to them. Each call that comes into the center has to be taken seriously. There's no way for the call takers or dispatchers to know what actually is on the other end. Every call as if 
what they're telling you is true in 100 percent. The hope is those calls that are not won't stand in the way of help reaching people who really need it. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It's now 645. And today we are checking with Justin Horn to see how the roads are looking. Kind of stunned, honestly, in a good way, guys. We have not had any problems whatsoever this morning, other than a few slowdowns here and there. And Transguide showing us that most of the roads are still dry. We've got showers all around us and some pockets of heavy rain around us, as Michael will show you here in just a second. But it has not affected the morning commute. Uh, we do have a couple of wet roads here and there, uh, but you see traffic is moving for the most part at posted speeds. The only spots that we're noticing some slowdowns are kind of our normal slowdown spots out along 90 as you cross over 1604. Starting to see a few slowdowns on 151, 1604 on the northwest side, and then 1604 on the far north side where uh, there is construction underway. Otherwise, most of the major highways, maybe a few slowdowns as you get into downtown, but these are typical slowdowns. Uh, if anything does show up here on Transguide, we'll pass it along. But so far, so good. And that's uh, the way we like it. 1604 and Petrenko, that's the one spot where I'm noticing some wet roads this morning. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's good news on the roadway. Usually it seems like we jinx things when you say, hey, it's been uh, a great <laughs> morning. Yeah. So, well, I mean, but that's not. what's happening right now. So. And, and don't, if you're in San Antonio proper, don't get kind of a false sense of security as far as, you know, dry roads all morning or all day because we all are right. going to have, and rain is definitely moving into the area, which we're going to show you in a second. Uh, it's humid out there, as you can, uh, you'll definitely be able to tell when you step outside. And, you know, that's been the case all week long, basically. But that's going to change in a big way Sunday as that front moves through. So you get that drier air to come on in here and very cold air. This has a lot of support and that cold air goes all the way obviously back up into Canada. But nine right now in Cutbank, 19 Casper at one point. The wind chill was down to one in Cutbank, Montana. So with that colder air, which is parked up there to the north and that kind of northern branch of the jet stream, that will continue to work its way down in our direction. Notice how these little lines really speed up right here. A little jet streak as we call it and that's the disturbance moving through that's giving us the rain as of right now so we keep the same pattern going in here for the next couple of days very warm and but here comes that cold air which is just you know just pushing its way down to the south and by Sunday, we start off on the warm side and a few showers around here. But the surface front, this is upstairs in the atmosphere, the surface front is going to be pushing on through here and that will bring the cold air in. And then that cold air continues to push down in our direction. So that's going to be keeping us cold, very cold Monday, Tuesday and starting off on Wednesday. Then things will start to ease a little bit, but it's not going to be a heat wave by any stretch. And as far as the timing, exact timing of the front, we have again, same situation on Sunday. Um, as far as a warm, humid start, a couple of scattered showers around the area. Front moves through the hill country, first of all, late in the afternoon. Here in town, I'm going for 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock ish. Um, so it's going to be dinner time just after that. Winds are going to shift around. Cold air comes on in here. Humidity drops down and we'll have a few showers and those showers are definitely going to be lingering around in behind that. So it's just going to be one of those best way to describe it, kind of a raw day on Monday. We'll have wind chills to deal with, especially Monday morning. I mean, it's going to be bundle up. You know, this morning you open up the door and the humidity sort of pushes back. Monday you open up the door and it's going to be the cold that's going to kind of make you want to push back inside. Quick check of radar right now. And as I was talking about, here's the uh, the showers and some of these storms that will continue to work their way into the uh, northwest side of town right there around Helotus, um, just around SeaWorld, almost in toward Leon Valley. And there's another big cell which is going to be working its way. Most of these are going to the northeast a little bit, but this whole batch of rain is heading off to the east. And there's a lot more, of course, uh, over up to the north of us. That's where all the heavy rain has been. So, you know, in the, the big Big picture of things, not really a lot of it, but where you are getting the rain, you are getting some pretty hefty downpours and these there's so much moisture to work with in the atmosphere, so it'll taper off to the scattered variety this afternoon and then same thing through Sunday. Big front comes through Sunday. We'll be ready for that. Yes. Thank you, Mike. 10 till 76 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, honoring those hit and killed by drivers here in San Antonio, we're going to show you how the cycling community and family members of those killed 
are raising awareness and using altars to honor their memory. Plus a celebration of Puerto Rico happening here this weekend in the Alamo City. Tomorrow on GMSA, what you need to know about the Festival de Puerto Rico and how you can join the celebration of the vibrant culture. And let's look out there with a live cam. Again, we do have a chance of rain today. Uh, pretty much all day scattered showers. But for now, in this shot, no rain. 76 degrees. We'll be right back. And he was a standout athlete in high school here in San Antonio, moved away for college and a career. And now he's back in town inspiring young people today on GMSA at 9. We're going to introduce you to the educator of the month for October, who is now the athletic director and head boys basketball coach at Legacy Traditional Schools. We are celebrating Dia de los Muertos with Muertos Fest this week in Hemisphere and with the new space over at Civic Park is expected to be a bigger crowd than ever before. Admission is free, but if you can't make it out there, you can still watch the festivities during our special broadcast happening on November 1st. That starts at 8 p.m. and it'll air right here on KSET 12, or you can watch it online at KSET.com or any way you stream. For all this information, get your phone and scan the QR code on your screen now. It'll take you directly to our website. You can also find all of our Dia de los Muertos coverage there as well. And time now, 6.54. Let's go ahead and get one more look at the roads out there, Justin. Uh, yeah, looking good still. We have not had any issues out there. This is 410 in Jackson Keller, 410 in Ingram. Uh, we've noticed a couple spots where there's some, uh, maybe some wet roads, but nothing that uh, really jumps off the page. No big slowdowns. Pretty incredible. I don't know that we've had a morning like this where uh, we haven't had uh, really any big issues. I don't want to jinx it, but you do see that 90 out west is starting to stack up yes. as it often does. Uh, so we'll start to see some issues there. And then on the northwest side, seeing a few slowdowns uh, in the typical spots. That may be because that's where there were some uh, showers that moved through there. Point, 90 right around Casterville, West uh, Bear County. And as you can see, everything is sliding up to the northeast, so the northwestern corner of the city out there. And then a couple of more cells are moving in right there just to the southwest of Elmendorf. So we will have some of these showers around this morning and then just sort of the, uh, the scattered variety later on this afternoon. We are going to make it up to 82 today. Still plenty of humidity out there. Same thing pretty much tomorrow, Saturday, first part of the day on Sunday. Big front's going to come through, call it early evening Sunday. Temperatures will drop like a rock, and we're going to be down only in the 40s. And Justin's favorite thing is going to be wind chill to deal with. Oh, my he goodness. He just loves getting all bundled up on a cold, wet day. So, yeah. I mean, I'm planning I'm to teasing. come to work, but. <laughs> yeah. And sure. then you have to do trick-or-treating as well with <laughs> the kiddos. Right. All right, guys, we'll see you at night.